By the years of the French invasion, Mexican monarchists against the republic of the same country that just grabbed power with Benito Juarez at the helm had not lost hopes of getting back the country to a monarchy, so Mexican conservatives sought the help of Emperor Napoleon III. At the same time, the United States was plunged into a bloody civil war against the secessionists of the southern states. Intervention and willingness of the French to meddle into American affairs was a direct violation of the Monroe Doctrine, but Napoleon saw his opportunity in the fact that the United States was concentrated on the bloody civil war. A Mexican monarchy would, according to Napoleon, enforce French power on the region. Welcome to the channel, I'm Victus, and I would like you to come with me in this journey through time. Let us take ourselves a little break from the day-to-day -day chores and let's dive into this mod, Steam and Steel, to change the curse of history. Either if it's just for fun or whatever the reason you find enticing. If you're a history buff or an armchair general that loves grand strategy, warfare facts and wargaming altogether, you are in the right spot. Very, very straightforward, we're going to recount a little bit of the situation. We have just started the blockade of the commerce in the Gulf of Mexico and we have landed our troops in a settlement south. We already know, according to the scouts, that there are some troops that already know about our presence. Sadly, we don't know anything about the troops that could be possibly coming down from Mexico City. So the first thing is to evaluate the situation and trying to assess what is going to be the next steps. Concerning the Balkan theater, we have given Thessaloniki to the Greeks. The Turks are not so happy about the situation, so they have sent an army commanded by Hazan, and we have already spotted that army. We already know that the Sultan is carrying behind the walls of Constantinople. We have to think about if we are going to push or we are going to defend. So now that we know what is happening, we're going to end the turn and hopefully we're going to have a better situation the next season. So now, a diplomat from the King Empire, a Chinese, is approaching us. They are requesting gold in exchange of trade in the area of Indochina, which is nowadays Vietnam. We know that they are at war with the Kingdom of Spain, the Russian Empire and some independent nations. So it is going to be good for us not only give them the amount of money that they are requesting, but give them a little bit more. So what we're going to do is to give them what they want, and perhaps a little bit more, which is going to be something around 4,000. So the reason I have decided to do this is because I want them to be in good shape defending against the Kingdom of Spain, which is one of our own neighbors, and the Russian Empire, which is one of our own rivals in the world domination. So we're going to counter offer giving them more money in exchange of trade rights. Of course, they are going to happily accept. Ok, 
Okay, so now we are thrown straight into the Balkan Theater. Let's go ahead and see what we can do in the Balkan Theater. Okay, so the situation here is a little bit interesting. As we may already know, we have blockaded all the ports that bring goods to the Turks. So this is, as well, not a very good situation for them. So pretty much what they are doing is the general called Hazan has decided to send an army that is now besieging Thessaloniki. We are very close from this army and we can do two things. We can go straight to attack Hazan or we can help the actual Greeks in the besieged city. This could be one thing, or we can wait for these guys to attack. So pretty much what we're going to do is perhaps going to Ready and able. maintain ourselves in the area, or perhaps go and attack Sofia, that could be another option. So I think up to this point, if we go and attack Sofia, this means that we could take the city, because the city is garrisoned just by Menzur line infantry but we're going to leave the Turks over here and this is going to allow them to take back Thessaloniki however inside Thessaloniki there's a complete garrison of Bulgarian troops now these Bulgarian troops are actual Bulgarians that were living in the area so it is very nice to understand that the Greeks are now using auxiliaries from this population to defend their cities. The main army of the Greeks, commanded by King Otto and another general called Crown Prince Georgios, is now in the south, in the area of Athens. So we are not going to attack but we're not going to move. We're going to establish defensive positions in this area and wait for the attack. However, we're going to risk the offensive of Hazan. But I'm pretty sure that is not going to happen. So at the moment that General Mehmed starts the attack in here, we're going to be ready to ready defend them. Unable. So that is going to be the situation here. Because we already don't know what is happening here, we see that there is an actual troop here that we don't know. We know about the Mustafis, and we know about the Manzur, but we don't know about the Bashi. So what we're going to do, perhaps, is to send, definitely, our French spy, which is located in the north, near Sofia, we're going to send him to get a little bit of information on the actual general here. Slipping in unseen. Of course, we're going to get the classic vanilla cutscene that is always so loved from all of us in this old title. So now we can have a little bit more of an understanding what they are doing. There's one unit here that interests us, and it's called the Bashi Bazooks. So these guys have an attack of four, a charge bonus of 4. They have a defense of 6. In the other hand, we know that the Erturul have an attack of 8 and a charge bonus of 4. Meaning that these Bashi Bazooks are a less powerful cavalry unit. However, we can see that these guys are not using missiles and that is something interesting. Okay, now that we know that, we can begin 
trade increase. So Henry Jules has increased the subterfuge skills. So he has now plus one to agent skill and plus one to line of sight, increasing the range at which enemies are spotted. So now let's go to America. In the American theater, we can take some of these units and mostly we can see that we have here a diplomat and we have as well two diplomats in this area. So the first diplomat that we're going to take is Auguste Alexandre and we're going to send him not only to talk with the leader of the Mexicans but as well to have a look at this area so he's going to be some sort of a spy. By now we can see that there's another army approaching in the north of Veracruz and that is something that we need to take into account. So with this we can check the army here which is it, it is said that is commanded by Refugio. We can see that it's a full stack army but we don't know too much about it. So we're going to continue our advance with our diplomat and we're going to send this guy en route to Mexico City. Okay, so now we can see that Mexico City is in front of us. Let's have a look at the city of Mexico. We see that it's the heartland and we see that there's a trade port that we are actually blockading over here. Let me just go ahead and show you the blockade of the port and as well they have dockyards this means that they can create ships from here the other thing that they have is or at least what our diplomat can tell us is that they have a central government the area is most likely of the culture of latin culture we can see that there is Anglophones, one Anglo Anglophone of 100, there are three tribal and six imperial, the rest are Latin. So now let's have a look at the situation. We already know that there's an army very very close to Veracruz. So the thing is that we need to decide if we're going to attack or we're going to stay where we are. I think that the best thing we can do is to attack. I don't think that this area is going to be is going to be reinforced by the army of Mr. Refugio. So I think that is going to be something that we must try and we must risk. So the first thing we're going to do is to send our troops directly to Veracruz and besiege the city of Veracruz. Historically, the French would take the city of Veracruz, so we are going to do the same in this instance, but at the very moment that we take this, everything could change. Okay, so if we go and we say that we're going to assault, just to have a look at what is going to happen, we can see that the settlement is now being protected by Prime Minister Eduardo. This guy, Prime Minister Eduardo, is on Veracruz and there is no reinforcements on site. That is a good signal. So perhaps it was a good idea to do what we did. So let's have a look at this guy, Mr. Refugio. Refugio has perhaps a very good loyalty. So just with this, we already know that it's not going to be a good candidate for treason. So we're not going to talk with him about anything that has to do with money. So now that we are besieging Veracruz and we have decided that in the Balkan theater, we're simply going to stay where we are. What we're going to do is to go and attack 
Veracruz. Ready and able. So let's do it. Glory to Mon Roi. We attack. Raise the Oriflam. Bring your honor as we attack. Okay, so the situation is going to be very, very easy for us because we have brought two muscle-loading rifle cannons. Here we have Emperor Napoleon. Let's check where he is. So he's over here, protected by one Kuriazer in this area. This is the General Staff, a very powerful cavalry unit in this mod. So we're going to place him here. The other thing is to take the chasseurs à cheval and place them at the sides. But we're not going to put them too far away from Napoleon. We're going to put them very, very close. So if something goes wrong, they can help him. The other thing that we're going to do is to place both units that we have for cannons. We're going to place these two units in front of the gates because we already know that shooting at the gates with one single shot we can break them. Over here we have the option to separate the fusiliers in one line and we're going to place them very very close like this and we have the foreign legion, two guys of the foreign legion and one Senegalese troop plus one Suaves. So these are going to be the troops that we're going to send first in front of the battle. But we have to decide which of these we're going to we're going to to send first. So let's have a look at the actual stats that we have for the foreign legion. So let's have a look what are we talking about. So this is the Foreign Legion. Let's just start the battle because we need to see the stats. Let's just place this here and put a stop guarding, guarding the area. And these guys are not going to be enabled the fire at will mode. So in the meantime, these guys are not going to shoot. So let's go ahead and check these guys over here. So this is the Foreign Legion. Now, the model is pretty handsome. You can see that the model is handsome, it's beautiful, it looks very, very nice. It has backpacks and it's a, it's a little bit nice to see these type of models of the 19th century. So we have the foreign legion and over here we see these are the normal uh, french troops these are the so-called fusiliers that they are holding here a glitched rifle that is color blue it's very interesting the fact that these guys have blue rifles so that is something that we have to note and then here we have two in interesting units that First of all, we can see that this guy has a flag. This is something interesting. And this unit is called the Suaves. The Suaves have these loose trousers, loose breeches with this amazing hat. And you can see how is this unit modeled in very, very detail. And over here we have the Senegalese. These are the Senegalese with the fess. So that is basically visually. So what we're going to check right now is what are the stats of these guys. So we see the Suaves, they have 8 and 37. And we see here the Foreign Legion, early Foreign Legion. And they have 7, 20 and 4. So just by looking at the cards and the stats, we can see that the actual Suaves are more powerful. 
that that is something that I was expecting. But now let's have a look at how these guys have this melee attack of 7 and a missile attack of 20, which is not good. I have seen Bulgarian troops from the Balkan theater that have better missile attack than this foreign legion. Let's have a look at the actual Senegalese. The Senegalese have 37 in missile attack, which apparently is the standard, because if we see the Fusiliers, they have 37 as well, and the Suaves have 37. However, Fusiliers have 7 in melee attack, and the Suaves are going to show us that they have better ability to fight. In the other hand, these guys, the Senegalese troops, they have 7, the same as the Fusiliers of France. And there is pretty much no difference in between the Senegalese troops and the Fusiliers. So for our surprise, the actual Senegalese and Fusiliers are better units than, let's say, the actual Foreign Legion. So basically the Foreign Legion is going to be the first unit that we're going to send into the fray. So let's do a pause here. We're going to use the same strategy that we used to take Thessaloniki. So let's go ahead. First of all, we can see that here we see a web page, domod.org, and some Chinese symbols over here. So let's go ahead and see the city of Veracruz. Apparently, the cities in this mod are the same, because I don't see any difference whatsoever in between this city and Thessaloniki. Even though we are now in America, it is pretty much the same. We can see the same structures, we can see the same chapel, and over here we can see the same edifice that we saw on our previous video. And apparently here we see the same market, the same river. It's pretty much a copy-paste of the other city. Now, I have mentioned that these cities look very, very nice. Indeed, this bank look pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. And the buildings, which are pretty much European buildings, they look very handsome. However, we see that is the same, it doesn't matter which faction you are. So far we have seen two factions and apparently is the same. Now, let's have a look at the units here. Over here we see these beautiful units that we don't see the name. So we're going to say that this is the normal line infantry for Mexico and over here we see the general escort for the Mexicans that is pretty much the same unit that I remember we saw on actual Brothers versus Brothers, the Civil War, American Civil War. And pretty much this is the same model. But it's nice to see it in Medieval. So what we're going to do is to shoot at these guys. So let's begin. And let's see how the situation is going to develop here. So our troops, we have sent the order to load the cannons and start shooting at the enemy. So let's enjoy here and see how these guys are going to start destroying their enemies. So here we go, fire! Okay, let's have a look. Okay, that was a good hit. Some of the um, actual some of the actual cannonballs impacted over this edifice in here. I uh, if you if you were able to see the actual situation. Now let's see if that is going to to hit uh, the actual building here. So it it was a, a miss for this unit. Okay, so now we're going to move these troops over here. 
in the meantime we're going to see the march of the foreign legion So the foreign legion here is going to approach the city of Veracruz as we bombard the plaza. Okay, so let's have a look at what is happening back here. This is going to be the point of view from, from Emperor Napoleon III. So this is his POV. So you can imagine him giving orders and this guy is moving back and forth to, to send the orders to the other guys. Let's remember that in this time period there were no radius. So these guys are going to be here giving orders and then moving and going back in here so let's uh, have a look at what is happening we see our our troops approaching we see the cannonballs flying over this beautiful scene let's go ahead and see what is happening inside the plaza so this is pretty much the point of view of the Prime Minister, we have hitted him very, very hard. The enemy is badly blotted. They have lost half their men. We can see all the bodies here, so pretty much this is a, a win for us. And this is a way to simply do, do not engage with them. So we are not losing any man into this invasion up to this point. That was a great, a great, uh, a great miss. Okay, now, we will need our troops to, to be ready for the... to enter. So what we're going to do is to place them here, in both sides, because we don't want them to be in front of the gate at the moment that we begin the order of destroying the gate. So let's take our artillery and let's send the order to destroy the gates. So we're going to wait for, for the shot and the gates are going to be opened in a single, in a single shot. There we go. We need one more. Wow, that was very interesting to see how they missed all the shots there. Are we missing this? Perhaps I'm going to go for the normal grape shot. Oh, we have different types of shooting. We have grape shot here. Perhaps this is going to, to be better. Oh, th this is friendly fire. Very, very sad to see the grape shot um, provoking <laughs> friendly fire. I was just trying to to see what what how that how that looked like but okay so let's uh, shoot with a uh, normal normal ammo there we go 
now we can take the actual grape shot and shoot here. So we're going to shoot normal, normal rounds to them. So let's have a look at these guys when, when they start loading. So it's pretty nice to see these guys loading. So let's go to the foreign legion and let's uh, put them in. So we can see how the foreign legion is now going to to cross the gates of Veracruz. Make them run. We have captured the enemy's walls. Okay, so there they are. So we're going to place them here in one line, and then the other guys over here in one line. In the meantime, we're going to see that ah, oh, they are going to defend the bridge. Okay, so it's time for us to stop shooting with the actual cannons. So we're going to give the order to stop. The other thing that we have to do is to take the actual Jesus a cheval and move them in here. So we're going to begin with the situation here. There's going to be here a firefight, so we're going to send our troops over here, and then this guy's here. They are already shooting at us, so they are going to defend their city we can see these brave mexicans reloading here and over here we see a brave one two three four five six seven eight men eight men regiment defending their their land so here we start shooting with the foreign legion Okay, we shoot with these guys and now we approach with this. Okay, now let's shoot and then advance with these guys. Okay, so let's shoot. There we go. And then finally we move these guys over here. So this is the last stand for the Mexicans. The, the our troops approaching here. Now it is time for our troops to start shooting.
Okay, so now we are we advance the other guys here. Just to execute the actual general over here. So we won. You can see here the the prime minister, which is actually charging against us. Our men have taken control of the city. Over here, we're going to see our foreign legion kill the the actual leader here. It's over. Now there's actually one, one Mexican here and one here fighting with this guy. Okay, let's not shoot. Do not shoot. Let's see this battle. He's dead. That's the last one. Okay, it's over. We lost, we lost 47, it looks as if we have lost more because I am in a very small size in terms of unit size, because of that it looks as if we lost a lot but we lost uh, pretty much 47 guys. Okay so Veracruz is now French. So we have the decision here, we could enforce strict discipline, this is what we did in Thessaloniki, obviously this was because we are bound to maintain the freedom of the Greeks, but here it's different, so I could simply destroy the city which is not going to be smart because this is the only city that we already have on the actual American soil, so it's not going to be smart to do this, so I'm going to let the men loose. This as well, even though it's going to displace populace, is going to allow our troops to loot, so we're going to get a little bit of money out of that. So, as you can see right now, this area, which is more than more than 30 percent of Mexico is now part of us so we can see here basically southern Mexico is now in French is a French possession because of these we can send this wooden small frigate to this area and continue the blockading of this port and this one as well. What I'm going to do is simply put it here. So we can have a free port over here and start getting money from it. Okay, so in this moment, I think we can open talks with the Mexicans. But I'm not sure they are going to comply. Over here we have another army here that has four, four units. And here we have two full stack armies. Wow, this is this is huge. Look at this. This is hunters. And we can see that these guys are pretty good. They are not bad. And we have as well perhaps more information about the National Guard that they have a 39 missile attack which is much better than the normal ones and we have as well information about the general staff the Mexican general staff as we go through these we can see that these units have actual modified pictures which is pretty good so here we see this we see as well the federal infantry with the corresponding image they have 28 these are more like garrison troops not so good and these are 
the um, state national guard that i repeat so far are the best units that the mexican faction have this is again a loading rifled cannon and these are the hunters that have 30 39 which is not bad but it's not it's not amazing God will see justice served in our so here as well we can see that they oh they have another unit here that we we don't know what it is this is a dragoon unit but we don't know the stats of this unit so let's remember that we have another another guy here so one thing i could do is to perhaps take these guys in in central america this is a mexican diplomat that is already here but we can send this guy this guy has exotic gifts so i already talked about this guy this guy could be sent in in the area of north america so he can start opening negotiations with the confederate states but this guy has considered decent counsel so he has yet to hold any real presence but is a promising diplomat and multilingual because of this he knows spanish i assume so we're going to send him to this independent army that has actually have actually here land lanthers and we see seven and seven which is good this could be a mercenary force that we can use so we're going to send him to talk with them and bribe them perhaps they're going to say that they want to be part of our troops and they're saying that they want to be to fight against the mexicans if we pay them this so i'm going to say okay and now this guy is now fighting for our cause here even though it's pretty much i'm a little bit disappointed because i thought this was a, a good army but they are providing us just with with cannons which is not bad we're going to use them so let's send them let's send them here we will need these cannons that was a lot of money actually a lot of money for for only cannons so yeah so now we have these guys so we we could talk with the people here in central america and perhaps we can we can put some of these guys into into our into our colors perhaps this imperial imperial culture here could be annexed and we can talk with them and and ask for annexation diplomatically over here we can see that they have this normal unit that is the regional militia and they have over here civil administration shipyard proto industry and a district over here which is called a district not the actual um, wall okay so the only problem here is these two armies so we are going to brace ourselves because the mexicans are coming and i'm pretty sure that they are going to give give a fight in here so i think this is this is it for the actual chapter i'm just going to end the turn and when the turn finish if these guys attack we're going to be called into the action but we're going to fight the battle in the next chapter Okay, so we got right now a candidate for promotion, which I'm going to decline. And we we have our diplomat here that was sent to Stockholm. I'm going to try to find Stockholm over here. Ah, oh, there you are. So we're going to talk with them just before ending the actual chapter. 
this is Sweden and Norway. But we're going to go for trade rights at the end. That was the actual reason we, we were there. So let's see what happened on the Balkans. They they took Thessaloniki and we were not called, so we lost Thessaloniki. This was something that I was not expecting. But again, we will we will avenge the the Greeks here. But before doing that, I think the our best option is to take Sofia, so we're going to send this guy straight in into this into the north. We're going to take this. This is going to be pretty much very easy because there's no one here. So let, let me just auto resolve this. It's a clear victory. We're going to simply let the men loose. And with this, we can. Well, we can see that there's another, another unit here. This is Hazan, actually. But with this, we can perhaps take these guys and move over here With honor. so this this city is going to rebel and then these guys are going to to attack so we're going to be able to take this city again Ready and able. God be let me just go and um, double click this city to increase the actual Revenue tariff, emergency taxation. Let's do the revenue tariff. And we're going to talk about in the next chapter about this, these three options that we have when we take a city. Because I just noticed this. We have client state installation, colonial pacification, and martial law. So it is very interesting that this mod has these options. So we're going to talk about that in the next chapter. Okay, so now, hopefully these guys are going to go for Sophia instead of going and attacking Athens. And over here, we can see that the Mexicans have just retreated. So they decided that retreat was better than, than attacking us. So you can see there there should be another army over here but i cannot see the other army perhaps they just they just um perhaps they just disbanded that army because they're not having the actual revenue from this port who knows perhaps it could be somewhere around here so hopefully you are enjoying this don't forget to subscribe if you are enjoying this of course which I am pretty sure you are. This was Victus. See you in the next one.